need to you know there's certain things that you learn kind of through each week or each month of running your business and for me um it was not a case of kind of speeding up the, the production process to get these new products out it was just kind of spending time kind of raising a bit of awareness about the brand raising a bit of awareness about my first product and and what it can do and then just when the time was right I ended up launching the other two products and funnily enough that happened during lockdown um I had to make quite a tough decision whether or not I was going to go into furlough because the doctors had been investigating um, respiratory issues with my lungs um, and the day we went into lockdown was the day of my hospital appointment for the test so I've never I've never been checked since um, and myself and my work had to kind of determine whether I should be kind of not necessarily shielding as in that kind of highest risk but there is obviously some sort of risk factor so it's a really tough decision because my um, at the time my husband was at college um, and I was working full-time as well as Temple Juliana so I was expecting I was like I'm gonna have to shut off the business I'm gonna have to I, don't, I didn't know what we were gonna do um, but it actually turned out to be such a blessing because I had all this time to work on the business so at this point I was contacting different stock and my markets had been kind of put off so I was trying to think of different ways to adapt and be a bit more flexible so I was looking at stockists and different subscription boxes um, and it's just kind of slowly grown from there we've been um, featured in a couple of subscription boxes in kind of Glasgow there's a company keep Glasgow thriving they put um, Tierra Bam in their boxes and um, I've had other I've got other companies that are going to be featuring some of the products in the coming months as well which is really exciting I also had the products um, in Vanity Fair as well so that was quite a big that was quite a big moment for me because um, I had been kind of focused on like kind of getting a bit more exposure and getting things out there and then Vanity Fair got in touch and it was kind of one of those moments where I was like oh my goodness but I would say that's probably helped in growing the business as well that is huge so how did that come about <laughs> Um, it's well my, my true my, my kind of true answer would be a wee bit woo woo and um, depending on where you're you're you kind of stand with these sort of things but um, I'm a big fan of journaling and kind of gratitude journals and things like that so I was I was just kind of writing in my journal I swear down the day before they got in touch Um, I was writing in my journal and I was saying oh, I, would, I would be so grateful to to have kind of some sort of kind of PR opportunity where I can just kind of showcase the products and what they can do and then I was working on my laptop the next day and it was like four o'clock in the evening or something and I got this email through from Vanity Fair and I was like no way no way and I was like slapping my husband's and I was like trying to get his attention I was like read this email and at first we thought it was a scam we thought it, we I don't know who we thought it was but we thought it was a scam and we were like hmm like somebody's kind of quite a Scottish thing but like kind of bamming bamming me up like con making contact but it when I kind of cross-checked everything and, and researched email addresses and stuff, it was it was Vanity Fair, um, and they basically said that they were doing um, kind of like a three-month campaign, and the first kind of part of the campaign was the Vanity Cabinet, and they felt that the brand was really kind of on point for what they were going for. It's what their kind of target audiences go for, and they'd love to have the brand on board. Um, so I was running about the house like a lunatic for about 40 minutes after that um, and then I emailed them back and, and we kind of had a call and went from there so it was really exciting but that was kind of like my big first kind of not necessarily like business call or anything like that but that was kind of like the first kind of big official thing so it was quite nerve-wracking but it was a really again that was a really good experience because it kind of it kind of gets me used to having those sort of conversations and learning a bit more about that side of business as well that is so, so cool a bit for you no kidding <laughs> thank you well and I do think like you know as you say depending on like where you stand with spiritualism and and how you feel about all those things you might see mm. all of that differently but I think everybody can agree that you know if you put if you put kind of positive stuff out into the universe and you have a really strong idea of what you want to do somebody will find that and somebody yeah. will interact with that and mm -hmm. I think that's great I mean you found your audience sort of not accidentally but organically which is really nice mm -hmm. yeah it has all been very again the kind of best word that I can think of is it's all been very fluid you know it's almost been as if everything that's happened whether it be kind of good bad um, something to learn from it's all came 
when it's needed or when it's meant to have come you know so it has it's been it's been fun a lot of people say kind of starting a business in your first year of business is really stressful and it's really um kind of exhausting and don't get me wrong it is at times but the feeling of having your own business and kind of jumping little mini obstacles and and kind of making little breakthroughs here and there it's so rewarding so it's been amazing even just the first year well and I really like what you said about things kind of being fluid and rather than maybe having a really set strict formal plan in place you've kind of just gone with it gone with Mm -hmm. the flow and when things opportunities came in you went for them but didn't maybe push too hard I feel like that with my own business too like I know a lot of people who have a really set business plan and it's very well laid out and you know I'm not Mm -hmm. I don't have no idea where I want things to go. I do kind of have some general goals um, and sort of like big picture goals, but I'm the same. I kind of like to see like what opportunities come my way and seek out yeah. opportunities and see what feels right. Because I, I guess I've never really been a planner though. I'm quite a sort of, I, I leap before I look sort of a person, but I like uh-huh. that. I like that. I don't know what will happen tomorrow or next week or next month. Um, yeah. And I think perhaps people like us have found the pandemic a little bit less I don't want to say challenging a little bit less scary in that regard because Mm -hmm. if you are a person who has everything planned the pandemic's thrown all that out the window whereas if you kind of are a go with the flow person you've maybe had a few hiccups I would be lying if I said I had but you at least kind of just go all right this is what's happening now I'm gonna go with it yeah I mean you're absolutely right it is so much easier to kind of pivot that's probably the best word you can you can adapt and pivot really quickly when you have because I'm the same I have quite a similar mentality um and kind of attitude towards running my businesses as you do as well and I mean for for the first couple of months after I launched the business I was thinking to myself I was like I really should have maybe written out a business plan I should have maybe been a bit more strategic and a bit more specific but then I actually looked back on everything that I'd achieved since having the kind of idea of Temple de Luna and I thought well do you know what I've actually done pretty all right so far so I tend to do my planning in blocks I like to kind of plan three monthly and similar to you I have kind of goals and ideas of where I'd like to be but I don't have anything that I'm kind of rigid stuck to you know I'm pretty happy just kind of not necessarily intuitively running the business but just kind of going with the flow and just seeing where it takes me you know I'm not I'm not in a rush to be in every household in the world, you know, so it's just, it just takes what it takes, you know. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about that is, I don't know if you fall into this trap, but I sometimes get very caught up in what I think I should be doing. I see somebody Uh else maybe has a similar business or at least appears to be a little bit further ahead in their business and I'm going, oh, I'm not doing that. Should I do that? And it's easy to kind Mm -hmm. of fall off your own track and get caught up in that so I think it's really good to realize we all work in different ways and some people need those very you know as you say strategic rigid kind of Mm -hmm. plans and that works for them and then there's people like us that are maybe a little bit on the other side of the spectrum and that works for us and that's okay yeah you're absolutely right and I think you're right when it comes to having those kind of thoughts about should I be doing this or should I be more focused on this or what is kind of this person doing And I think it's very common, especially when you are running a business on your own, you don't have somebody, I mean, you have, I have my husband and and my my family have been amazing um, for kind of as a soundboard bouncing ideas and things off of, but when you're running a business on your own, you do have those thoughts of, oh, um, maybe I'm not doing as well as this person looks, or I'm not doing as well as, as like how, what this person's doing. And it can be hard not having a business partner to kind of bounce those concerns off of but I I do find that you eventually kind of talk yourself around and it's just a case of acknowledging that everybody goes at their own pace you know what might work as you say might work for one person is so different for the other person and I think for me it's really just been about kind of relaxing and and finding a kind of like finding the best way to react when I when I do see for example another company that's been doing really really well or appears to be doing really really well it's good for it feels good for me to feel good for them you know that that's kind of the perspective I look at I I kind of will look at myself or look at what they're doing and say that's amazing look how far they've come since I started following their account that's really good it's possible for them so it's possible for me and it's just trying to find the positive spin on it you know and I, I find that that can be really effective for me as well 
Yeah, I totally agree. And it is, it's if you're kind of constantly comparing yourself to everyone else, it's hard to be happy for other people. And it's just yeah. it's like a recipe for being constantly discouraged. And I mm-hmm. think, yeah, when you kind of realize that everyone goes at their own pace and also that everybody wants different things, we don't all mm-hmm. have the same goals. It's kind of like you said, like you're, you didn't start this business with the mindset of, I want my products to be in every person in the whole world's home. You uh-huh. wanted to do this because, you know, you had so many of your own reasons. And I think maybe we'll talk about that next. The whole mm-hmm. idea of creating a business, not with profit being your number mm-hmm. one goal, but actually your passion and sharing that passion and helping other people with your own experience. So can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that? And I guess what, um, what, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? I think for me, the kind of core of my why is the the skin and personal transformation that I've been through on my own journey. Um, We talked about how kind of my experience with acne and again, I had bouts of psoriasis at points during my my teenage and early adult years that had a real knock on my confidence. I mean, I couldn't take the bins out from my back garden to the street. I couldn't take them out without a full face of makeup on. Um, And I, I used makeup as a mask and I think makeup's amazing, but I was definitely using it to kind of conceal myself and to try and boost my confidence. And I just wasn't very... I just wasn't very authentic. When I look back in hindsight at the person I was then, it, I was constantly kind of covering parts of myself up and it was very skin orientated. And it's been so liberating to come out the other end of that and not suffer with acne anymore and have manageable psoriasis. And I very rarely wear makeup nowadays. If I do, I only wear eye makeup and lipstick because I'm so comfortable and happy in my skin even though I still have acne scars I have pores obviously everyone has pores but um I have acne scars I still have blemishes um sometimes I have cystic acne you can kind of see it on my neck sometimes but I'm still much more confident kind of going out and about and for me it's been the most liberating feeling and that's my why for other people because I know how maybe it shouldn't be but I know how debilitating having skin concerns and problems skin can be and I know the impacts that it can have on yourself what you choose to wear where you go out who you spend time with it really does have a massive impact on your life and for me I just want to be able to have products that have been able to take me through that journey and through the the other end I want to be able to share that with other people and, and kind of take people through that same journey as well well and that's such a great why because you know I know at the basis of every business you know, or most businesses anyway, is solving a problem for people, whether Mm -hmm. it's a product or a service. Um, But I think when you have had that experience yourself personally, that makes it all the more closer to your heart, I guess, because you Uh actually have been in their shoes. You you can um, sympathize with them. I don't know if that's the right, you know, you understand what it feels Mm -hmm. like. And I think I can totally relate to you as well. I've also struggled with acne and cystic acne as a mm. teenager and even into my adult years. Like I'm, how old am I now? I have to think about this one, 34. <laughs> um, and I still get, you know, some really like, my skin is still not great. It's a lot better than it was, but mm-hmm. I did the exact same thing, full face of makeup anytime I left the house. And I never felt like me. It was never, as yeah. you see, it wasn't just having fun playing with makeup. It was like, uh, a total self-conscious thing I was the same I would mm. never leave the house without makeup on and I would hide under like scarves and things because I was so yeah. self-conscious it's a horrible way to feel mm. so I think it's amazing that you've turned that into a positive now knowing how bad that is and trying to help other people so that they're not experiencing the same uh, thing yeah and I think it's just that that kind of case of kind of being able to relate and and it's easy because you see a lot for example a lot of companies um more your kind of mainstream companies um in the industry they tend to like photoshop their pictures and their adverts their models I mean their models don't even have pores and if your skin doesn't have pores it can't do what it needs to do so for me a big part especially when it comes to my social medias it's it's about normalizing these things so kind of like you well I'm, I'm 25 and I do still experience the odd breakout especially down main street and things like that I do tend to break out a bit more but I think for me I've noticed a lot of people don't realize how normal that is to be the ages that we are 
and still have problems skin to a degree, whether it's adult acne or eczema. Our skin is our skin deals with so much, so it's natural for it to to kind of purge itself. But it's 